So we were really happy to uh, learn uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, that NASA decided to use uh, our data to navigate uh, New Horizons to Pluto. So in terms of navigations, what that, when navigation, what that means is that they're using the stars just like the ancient navigators were using the stars to know where they are on Earth. New Horizon uses the star to know where they are in the solar system and with respect to, to Pluto, more precisely. So we map very precisely the stars around Pluto and we're really happy to see that uh, NASA was using these data. They need the data to uh, navigate the, the probe. If the data is less precise, then they have more uncertainty on where they are. So they may think they are gonna avoid something that's in the way, but they're going toward it without knowing. So it's really uh, the highest precision possible. And there's very little room for error because they're, do they're going at something like 57,000 miles per hour. So uh, you need really precise data to be able to navigate the most precise possible. And generally that's how NASA works. They will take whatever is the best available. And it turned out that we were. Mom on Pluto One, we have a healthy spacecraft. We've recorded data of the Pluto system and we're outbound for Pluto. Yeah. That's it. Pluto was, uh, New Horizon was navigated toward Pluto and passed without you know, any bad encounter. So, or any accident or running into anything. So that was really the goal of the mission uh, with New Horizon to bring it to Pluto safely. And in these last uh, millions of miles, navigation was a little trickier because there's debris around and things floating around Pluto. That's pretty great. I mean, that's, that's and quite frankly, that's the best part of uh, the job that I do here is that to, uh, find out that CFHD data has been used for some major discovery. And you're right, depending on what level you are, it'll be more or less uh, often. For us on the science side, I mean, it happens quite regularly, but it's, it's things that are difficult to explain to the public. When something like that comes along and the public really uh, gets on board and is interested by it, then it's really, really the best we can get. That's, that's very nice. It's uh, the first uh, American planet that was discovered uh, by an American. So uh, I guess the US has a, uh, a hold on Pluto. It used to be Europeans that discovered all these planets, but Pluto was the first one. But the fact that it, it's uh, been demoted by the IU just makes it the first of a different class of objects, basically. So it's a, an as important discovery as discovering a planet. You just discover a new class of, uh, of objects. Oh, pretty much everybody is, I would say, a, a huge percentage, more than 95% agree with it, because at some point astronomers were faced with a choice, is that you end up adding a lot of bodies as planets, or you remove one from the planet status, and you end up with eight planets and a whole lot of bodies of a different status. So the choice was quite easy in the end. I mean, it's, it was obvious that we were going to have a lot of objects like Pluto coming around, and they are coming around. At the time that the IU made the decision, there were something like I don't know, three or four that were known, but since then, discoveries, more powerful telescopes have uncovered more and more. And these would have all to be named planets because they they are similar to Pluto, but now we're avoiding that. We have eight, eight planets and several Kuiper Belt uh, dwarf planets. They're really due to the more powerful telescopes and better techniques to detect them and all that sorts of things. And uh, Mauna Kea is a big part in that. That's one of the best sites in the world, so it really helps in the discovery of these objects.